Hello, my name is Kashmani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kashmani. We are here because we want to improve our vocabulary. Today is our lesson number 63. Kashmani prep. Okay, day 63. There are only three or four words I have today. The very first word that we want to learn today is Christen. It's pronounced Christen. It's just like Christ. First we write Christ and then insert E and N at the end and it's pronounced Chris Un. It's a verb. What does it mean to christen? To christen, it's a verb. It has two meanings. The words has two meanings. Some words, not all of them obviously, but some words have two meanings. They have literal meaning and they have metaphorical meaning. Literally, to christen means to baptize and metaphorically it means to give someone or something a name. It could be someone or it could also be something. If you give someone or something a name it's called christening it. For example I use it all the time uh, when I'm doing the math video, for example, in the, I'm, going to, I'm going to use it in the context here. For example, if we have a triangle here, these corners of the triangles are called vertex, and the plural of vertex is vertices. And I always say, when, when we have a picture, instead of saying this triangle and not that triangle, and this rectangle and not that rectangle, it's always useful to christen the vertices. So I'm going to christen them, these vertices. There are three of them here, obviously, because it's the triangle, three sides. Let's christen them, PQR. There you go, you see? We just christen these three vertices. We just gave them a name to christen. Let's move on to the next word. So if I use this word in the context next time, let's christen this or let's christen that. That's what it means. Let's give it a name. The next word that, we, that we're going to learn is actually not a word, it's a phrase actually, a phrase from Latin that you see a lot of the time in textbooks, in science textbooks, uh, in mathematical textbooks and so forth, and the phrase is Cateris Carapus, Cateris Carapus. Ter Cateris Carabus. As I said already, it's a Latin phrase and it's an adverb. It's an adverb, Cateris Carabus. What does it mean? It means with all other things, with all other things or variable being constant. All things equal. All factors being equal, all things equal, scatters purpose, all other things being constant, all other things being constant. Scatters purpose is called. For example, for example, as I said, it's used in the mathematical textbook, it's used in science textbooks, even social sciences, it's used everywhere. Scatters purpose 
is the assumption we make in order to answer how does one variable affect the other variable or what happens when this particular thing changes, what happens to the scenario, assuming everything else remains constant. That's what he means, assuming everything else remains constant. Everything else remaining constant. For example, for example, if you're told, if you're told that uh, a bunch of workers are building a house, and we are told that uh, if uh, twelve workers, if twelve workers take uh, twenty days to build a house, then how long will two workers take? How long will the two workers take to build the same house? Caterus paribus. In it, even though it may not be stated explicitly. <coughs> The caveat in that is, and I will come to this word that I just used in a second, uh, the notice in there, the warning in there is pet caterus paribus, which means everything else constant. In other words, uh, we're, not going to, we're not talking about a scenario where these two workers, the question was if 12 workers build a house in 20 days, how long will it take for the two workers to build the same house? Assumption here is that these two workers work at the same pace as the other two workers, and we're not, we're not talking about situations where when these 12 workers were building, or building a house, it took them 20 days to build a house. And then when the two workers started working alone, we don't want to find out it's the monsoon season and they cannot work half the time. Or we're not going to find out that this one, of, one of these two workers fell off the building and now there's only one worker. Assuming everything else is a constant. Nothing out of the ordinary is happening. All other things constant. All other things being constant is, is what is known as Ceteris paribus, all other things being constant. All other things being constant right here. All else equals. All things equal. Everything else remaining constant. Ceteris paribus. Let's go to the next word. The word that I just used in the context a little while ago. The word was caveat. What is a caveat? Since the since the question is phrased in that in, in those terms, what is it? It must be a noun. Some people pronounce this as caveat, 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 and some people pronounce this as caveat with a sound in it and here is a, here's a, here's a uh, pronunciation key if it, help, if it helps you a little bit a with two dots right here is the same sound is the same sound as what you is the sound that you find in father caveat it has two sound two dots you see caveat as opposed to e with a long sound which is the same sound as the one you find in b right here caveat and caveat what is a ca what is a caveat a caveat is a formal warning is a it's a noun it's a formal warning it's a formal notice it's a caution so in the previous scenario when we talked about the workers building a house 12 of them building a house in 20 days how long does it take for the two workers to build the same house the caveat over there is that everything else is constant everything else uh, no, no other factors are changing just the number of workers and nothing else everything else is constant so in that in that scenario the, the caveat was Ceteris paribus you understand then I have the last word for today and the word is the last word that I have is a very simple, very straightforward word. I wanted to use it. I wanted to uh, put it on the list anywhere because many a times I found out that when I use this word, uh, people look at me like I am uh, speaking a foreign language. Uh, actually, I am speaking a foreign language, which is the English language for me. Uh, but anyway, the word is the 
language that I speak is a foreign language to me, but I don't want it when I speak English. I don't want it to sound foreign language to the person that I'm speaking to. Thrice is the word. Thrice. What does it mean? Like I said, it's a very straightforward word. It simply means. It simply means three times something. Three times something, as opposed to. As opposed to. Twice. Twice. How often do you go to gym? Twice a week. How often do you go to gym? Well, I go thrice a week. I go three times a week. Thrice a week. While we are at it, let's digress for a second. What is a period of What is the period of two weeks called? Is there a word for it in English language? Which means which means a period of two weeks? Yes, there is a word. A lot of the time when you talk to people, they will tell you, I get paid every other week. What they're trying to tell you is that they get paid twice a month. And instead of say they would say I get paid every other week, or they will say I get paid bi-weekly. Is there a word which expresses this notion of getting paid bi-weekly? The answer is yet. The word is fortnight. A period of fortnight, a period of fortnight is a period of two weeks. So if you get paid every other week, if you get paid every other week, you would say, I get paid fortnightly. I get paid fortnightly. And if you want to learn this word properly, if you want to learn this word properly, just type in the tag Keshwani Prep dash vocab dash day four and you will learn the word fortnightly. Similarly, what would you call something that happens what would you call something that happens every other year. Is there a word? Is there a word in English language that expresses this notion that this particular event takes place every other year as opposed to twice a year? It does not happen two times every year, but it happens every other year. Is there a word that expresses twice a year as opposed to every other year? And of course the answer is yes. Watch the video, day number four, and you will learn those words as well in, a, in addition to fortnight. But thrice was the word which simply means have anything that is happens three times. Thrice a week, thrice a, thrice a month, or thrice a day. Uh, that's all. That was the end for our lesson for today. Lesson number 63. I will see you tomorrow on day number 64 with more vocab words. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, you can go to any of these website addresses and send me an email. Or you can go to keshwaniprep.com and send me an email from there. I, I did all of these words, starting with the word uh, Christen and Ketras Parabell and so forth, especially Ketras Parabell and Christen and all that, because I was I started doing the, my algebra, uh, that's why you see the tag for the algebra there, I started doing my videos on algebra, and in those videos, many a times, I wanted to uh, Christen somebody, some person, some things, whatever, in the math videos, and I, it occurred to me uh, when I checked my list that we had not covered the word Christen, nor had we covered uh, the phrase Ketras Parabell. So I stopped my algebra videos and I, I did the stick so that you have it there. I will see you in the next vocab video, day number 64. Alright? Thank you.